thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us tonight. I want to extend a particularly warm welcome to those of you who are joining us at the Cancer Research Institute for the first time. You may know that we have been for many decades and continue today to be focused on the simple idea of harnessing the body's immune system in order to fight cancer. And I wouldn't blame you if you're learning about that for the first time tonight for wondering why it's taken so long to get there, for it seems like a pretty simple idea and a pretty obvious one. But the reality is that harm harnessing the body's immune system to fight cancer is highly complex and sophisticated and has taken generations of scientists, many of whom have been funded by the Cancer Research Institute, to learn the secrets of the immune system, how it works, and how it reacts to different cancers. Today, that work is saving lives. Thanks to 60 years of CRI investment in research, we now have immune-based treatments for some cancers, and many more are on the way. The era of cancer immunotherapy has begun. Over the next decade, immunotherapy is poised to become the backbone of cancer treatment for over 60% of cancers. That compares currently to just about 3%, a remarkable increase and in achievement. It reflects decades of groundwork that are now revealing the amazing potential of this new treatment approach. To give you an idea of just how significant this is, consider this. Most advances in cancer medicine to date have produced only small improvements in patient survival. On the other hand, effective immunotherapy can extend patients' lives for many, many years, often leading to complete remission. Some of those patients who have been lucky enough to benefit from that treatment are with us here tonight, and I'd like to introduce them. As I do, I'd like to ask you to do two things. Stand, and then, to the extent I mispronounce any names, belt out corrections. Let's start with Sharon Belvin. And if you would, I think I'll ask you to hold well-deserved applause until the end. Christine Sable, Donald Foley, Sharon, please remain standing, Elise O'Brien, Kevin Lankies, Jean Ogle, Mary Elizabeth Williams, and finally, our newest and youngest immunotherapy success, Emily Whitehead, whose story you'll hear about shortly. Thank you all for being here with us tonight. These amazing people who have joined us are just the beginning of immunotherapy's success. Many more are on the way. In a recent clinical study, headed by our own Jed Walchuk, and testing two immunotherapies, one of which was discovered by the director of our Scientific Advisory Council, James Allison. And Jed and James, if you would, please just stand so that we can acknowledge you, which we'll all want to do as soon as I'm finished with this. In this study, more than half of patients with advanced melanoma who were treated with the optimal dose experienced dramatic remissions. More than half, which is an amazing advancement. Compare this to the 5 to 20 percent responses usually seen with other treatments of this type of cancer, which are temporary and do little to reduce mortality. Results like this demonstrate the amazing progress that we're making in our vision to conquering all cancers. But there's still much work to, that needs to be done to optimize these treatments so that we can help more people 
and treat more cancers. In the last 60 years, the Cancer Research, has distinguished, the Cancer Research Institute has distinguished itself as a pioneer, a champion, and a leader in immunotherapy. We'll continue leading the way by funding the best science and finding new solutions to the challenges ahead. Together with our partners, supporters, researchers, and all others who help us do what we do, we will conquer all, conquer all cancers. Thank you again for joining us tonight, for your support. Your generosity saves lives. And now we're going to show you just one example of how.